Australia was once a land of convicts. Criminals transported here as punishment to build a distant colony. Though transportation stopped a century and a half ago, the legacy of these convicts remains today, few places as clearly as the Convict Trail. A 240 kilometre road built by these convicts in chains across the Australian bush from Sydney to farmland north. Most of the road is now covered in bitumen, but there is a preserved section 90 minutes north of Sydney. I've just done the hour and a half drive uh, up to Wiseman's Ferry. I caught the car ferry over and I'm about to start the convict trail. Working on the road was a sentence for convicts who committed more crimes when they were in Australia. It was an impossible challenge. Food was rationed, clothing was hard to come by, and the terrain steep and rugged. Construction on the road started in 1826 and was finished in 1836. They constructed this road uh, using the sort of engineering techniques that they learnt in uh, Europe and they took them to Australia with the chains they would have had on while they <laughs> made this road. The convicts worked in the beaming heat of Australian summers in iron chains carrying heavy sandstone bricks on their backs. Can you imagine if you'd like grown up in like the slums of London in like 1800 and found yourself having to build a road here? Like you'd think you might as well be on another planet. The convicts would use pickaxes to break up the large slabs of sandstone, which were used to build the retaining walls and bridges. You can still see the markings on the rocks from where their axes met the sandstone base. If you were caught using bad language while working on the road, you would get 36 lashes. And if you were caught being drunk, you'd get one more month of punishment working on this road. Apparently this rock base was the first major obstacle they came across in this section. They couldn't cut blocks out of it, so instead they drilled holes in it, put gunpowder in it, and uh, exploded it. You can see all these drilled holes down the wall. Wow. How cool is that? Apparently that was the most difficult section to build on the whole road um, because it's curved and it also has two culverts which were used to drain the water out so that they didn't erode the wall from the gullies at the top so as the water would come through the water could come out. Pretty neat. You definitely get a sense of uh, yeah. life back then would have been really tough. Steal a loaf of bread to feed your family and end up here for the rest of your life on a road in the middle of nowhere breaking uh, sandstone blocks. This is the stockade which is where the convicts would sleep and live when they weren't working on the road. This was built because 68 convicts had escaped and they wanted to try to stop them escaping. <laughs> Their iron chains would be checked once a day to make sure they were all done up properly. And apparently it was very cold and it does get very cold here in winter. So I could imagine it would have been absolutely miserable to have been here. Behind me are the names of some of the convicts who worked on the road back in the 1820s and 1830s. And a lot of their names we don't know, a lot of their names have been lost. They did so much work to really build Australia and make it what it is today. So it's, it's cool that all these years later we can have their names written down and recognize them. This here is called Hangman's Rock, and there was a rumour going around that they used to hang people from this. 
uh, which is a pretty cool story, but um, apparently that is just a story and there's actually no evidence they ever hanged anybody from there, so. <laughs> Trails there. Wow. Can you even imagine building this? You got a real sense here of just how tough things would have been back then in the colony. A lot of the convicts had left their families, their children back home, and just very little prospect of ever seeing them ever again. A lot of them were very sick, had a lot of diseases and how would you even deal with the things like the bugs here and the terrain and just absolute misery? There would have been so many times that you were not sure you could go on and these are the people that built this road and these are the people that did a lot of work in making Australia what it is today. A lot of these people were treated as criminals back home and were criminals and they came here and a lot of them really made something of themselves here. They didn't have all the judgment that they had back home. A lot of the convicts went on and did amazing things and you know their descendants are still around today and we owe a lot to them and yeah just seeing this physical example of what they did is really special you know. Despite the hard labour, once completed, it wasn't very popular. It was lonely and passed through few towns. Travellers instead opted to do the trip over the sea. Today, the old Great North Road is a scenic road. Almost everyone heading north takes a freeway. Still, you can't help but be mesmerised by this road. Imagining the iron gangs in chains, breaking up blocks of sandstone, dreaming of a place somewhere far away. I'm at the top of the hill now, which ends my hike. However, you can continue on. It goes like this for about another 40 kilometers. The convict trail itself does start in Sydney and you can see remnants of it in uh, Five Dock, which is pretty cool. So maybe I'll go check that out at some point. But for the meantime, I'm gonna head back down and I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.